Today's car is what happens when you take the mission statement of a brilliant and iconic car like the M2 CS and apply it to an already fantastic car like the M5 Competition. And then you wind up with something that could end up becoming legendary. And just look at it sat there. 140,000 pounds worth of M5. Surely it can't be worth the price hike over the competition. That's what you'd assume, but I've had a few days with this and it's absolutely blown my mind. The thing defies physics, as all the best BMW M cars should. That's what stood out for me. Forget the horsepower, forget the design changes, and everything that we're gonna go over. All of that's cool and you're gonna love it, but what you'll love more is seeing how this thing destroys corners with a vengeance. It is incredible. I can't wait to show you. Let's dive in, let's check out every single detail that makes this car unique from a technical and design standpoint, and then go for a drive and just revel in how marvelous the M5 CS is. So guys, it's possible that by the end of this episode, you'll quite fancy an older M5, in which case our sponsor today is gonna to be super useful for anyone looking to buy a slightly older car than usual, and that is Car Vertical. It's a website that allows you to check crash history, insurance history, auctions, whether a car has been used as a taxi, and so much information available on there. And it's an indispensable tool for anyone looking at a used vehicle. I'm gonna show you everything you can do on it right now. So guys, here we are inside car vertical. You can see you can enter any reg over here and then the car comes up. We've got an example Mini Cooper here and you can see all the different things that you can check here. So we can check the mileage, whether it's been stolen, any accidents, whether it's been used as a taxi. Accidents is coming up on here, isn't it? But more importantly, I found this fascinating. You can even see where the damage has happened with the photos. It's fascinating and it really gives you such a wide range of information. So you're really well placed to make a decision when you're getting into a used car. Now let's open up a second car report with this Vauxhall Corsa here. If we scroll down, you can see where it's failed an MOT, full record in detail here. Scroll further down and you can see a really useful feature in the mileage, which tells you what the mileage was and then you can see if anything's been tampered with. And finally, with this car as well, you can see we have photos of a previous accident. So guys, that's everything that you get with Car Vertical. It's quite brilliant, an indispensable tool for looking at used cars. It works in over 20 countries at the moment. Check the link down below. RBI viewers, of course, get a really great offer. Guys, buy safe and support our sponsors. So guys, what goes through the head of a manufacturer like BMW M when it comes to making a car like the CS? I mean, really, it's a car that, as lovely as it is, doesn't seem to make much sense when you compare it to the M5 competition that does a lot of what this car does. But I think it's this idea that BMW M Town have that I love, that it's a place where too much is just right. And I think this is the poster boy for that. I always thought my M2 CS was, I think this takes the cake. I know the price is ridiculous at 140,000 pounds, but it is a limited edition car. It is the most powerful BMW M car ever at 635 brake horsepower. And to my eyes, I think it's the best ever looking addition that they've ever done. I guess I really think it's gonna stand the test of time in that regard. We'll go over every single detail that makes me think that because it is wonderful. And there have been quite a few limited edition M5s over the past as well, which I think this car links to in terms of ethos. You'll remember our history of the M5 video when we went through the original car. There was a predecessor to that car called the BMW M535i. And even that had a racing version. Racing was all the rage back in South Africa back then. And alongside BMW M, who hadn't yet made a car, and AC Schnitzer, BMW SA made a limited edition, motorsport limited edition 530, essentially what it was called, MLE. It's had thinner and lighter panels, more strip tire, all your typical homogulation edition version. And that was even before the M1 came out. So really one of the first ever BMW M tinkered cars. After this, we had in the E34 generation, quite a few versions. The one that stands out that links to our CS, I think, was the Winkle Hock edition, who was a F1 driver. BMW M gave him the chance to make what he thought was the perfect M5. So of course he stripped out all the sound insulation, gave it wider rear tires, Recaro seats inside, etc., and, and made what was, I think, probably the most 
special E34 M5 and linking quite nicely to the ethos of our car today, I think as well. One that BMW M never made for mass production, there was only a one-off, was an E60 M5 CSL. Again, it was lighter like our car today, 110 pounds lighter. It was more powerful, 580 brake horsepower, had all the livery on it, etc. Did a stupendous Nürburgring lap of seven minutes and 50 seconds. Never made though, but today's car, I think, again, it carries forward that ethos. More recent times, we saw the Jahra 30 edition, which back then was the most, most powerful uh, BMW car ever up to 600 brake horsepower, but apart from some design changes, nothing really to set it apart. Our car today takes things from all of those cars and brings the M5 to a level that it's never been before. It's really not about that horsepower number, which we'll go over in a minute. It's about the cumulative little changes that made a huge difference, just like in my M2 CS. So guys, there is the brand new M5 CS, finished in an amazing, frozen deep green metallic with the gold and bronze accents that make it look so amazing. What a car this is, the most powerful BMW M car ever. And we'll talk about the figures in a minute, 635 BHP if you're curious. But to me, it's more about the weight saving. We've got 70 kg off the standard car in this, which is impressive how they've done that. The first and most important thing that you'll notice on this car is the new carbon fiber reinforced plastic bonnet which is totally unique to the CS. You can see the power domes on the side there, the big bulge in the middle as well, which is all very CS-like, like the M2, just exaggerated. Then you'll see it's carbon fiber here, which looks fantastic. And these are real vents, in case anyone is wondering, to release air and heat. And it looks fantastic. It's such a cool bonnet, and it's accentuated by that frozen deep green color. Let's take a look underneath it as well. Let's give this a little lift and you will see, oh wow, check that out. Can you guys see that? That is literally inscribed within here. It says M5CS, as you can see, all carbon fiber reinforced bonnet, the real vents, as you can see there. These are details that you just can't appreciate until you have the car in front of you. Hopefully this view is giving you guys a better idea We've also got carbon fiber engine cover here, as you can see. The intake silence are also carbon fiber and the power that the engine creates then, 635 brake horsepower, the most powerful BMW M car ever, 750 Newton meters and a zero to 60 claimed of three seconds. We'll see what it's like with launch control later on. Can we just have one more look at this? Because I just think that's incredible. This is something that really endears me to special editions because BMW M did not need to do this, did they? They could have been lazy, like a lot of manufacturers are, that, oh, you know, we've done the paint and the other bits. But that, the owner who's going to pay that premium for this car will appreciate that. And it's such a talking point when you show the car to people. Let's just step back for a minute and take a look at this thing. God, it looks amazing, doesn't it? This is the best edition they've ever done. Now, unique things of this edition. More importantly, we have got the carbon fiber front splitter here again from the M8. This is unique to the M5 CS and it's pretty fantastic looking. Again, gives the front end a look that the normal competition doesn't and you can appreciate that I think more in person. And then the other party trick, it's the amazing motorsport inspired yellow BMW laser lights that come standard on the CS. It's such a nice thing. It's for high beams and low beams and when you unlock the car and lock it, um, again, it just adds a little bit of flair to this edition. It's something that you won't see on a normal M5 and things like that, I really appreciate. Now, let's have a look at the gold bronze, which is lovely. Again, this is on the grill, as you can see here. It's a nice satin gold finish. I think it's more gold and bronze, to be fair. It's on the M5 CS badge as well. And then you come along the side, you'll find it on the M5 CS winglet badge as well really working nicely with the green, I think. Your lovely, unique frozen gold wheels matching the exact same color. They're not the quite the same wheels as my M2 CS in their finish. Mine are a bit more white gold, but these match then the badging that we have here. Look quite fantastic. Behind there, 
you'll see the carbon ceramic brakes. Again, weight saving of 23 kg versus the normal M compound brakes. And again, that's standard on the CS and they come in red, which you cannot get on a normal competition on the ceramic. So again, unique. You know, the car also rides on the Pirelli P0 Corsa track tires, 27535 on the front and 28535 on the rear. Of course, 20 inches across the board. Some very impressive tires and the suspension has been modified to accommodate these as well. Side of the car, the paint and the gold doing all the work here. And in fact, the rear spoiler and diffuser. Let's check that out now because it's quite amazing on the rear. Little changes again, making a big difference in my eyes. You'll see, first of all, the CS style spoiler matching exactly the same design as my M2, which is a bit dirty. Apologies for that, I use it a lot. But the lower diffuser, I love this. I've seen a lot of normal competitions around and this looks so much more aggressive versus those. You also got pipes to match our bronze gold. They look great. And of course, M5 CS logo in gold. Oh God, I like that. That's lovely. They should have done that on the M2, shouldn't they? And of course, a final point on why the design is so special is the interior which of course I'm gonna give you a rundown of in a minute. Excuse the baby seat in the rear. We've got our proper track bucket seats as we first saw in the brand new M4 competition, fully carbon, yet still adjustable. Carbon woolly holder there as well. No bring ring pattern. I'm gonna show you all of this in a minute, but yeah, another reason why this is so unique in terms of its design. We've also got, before I forget, carbon fiber roof as well. Again, as standard as standard, all weight saving measures here, carbon fiber diffuser, carbon fiber spoiler, carbon fiber front splitter and bonnet, all saving 70 kg. That's just the weight saving. Let's now talk about the suspension changes on this car, because I think that might be the most crucial part. So the first thing you must understand about the suspension is that it's shared with the M8 competition. That means we've got all new dampers that are that much better, not only at being sporty, but on the comfort side, as we found the new competition being so much better than the hard edged previous one. And the same is true of this car, despite the fact that it is a CS. Indeed, the bearing springs on both the front and the rear retuned for this car and the damper control as well is taking into account the fact that this car is that much lighter and the increased performance of the Pirelli Corsa tires taken into account as well. And just to make that point even clearer, there's your normal competition from the front and here is the CS. I mean, it makes a world of difference to me, but I see normal competitions on the road all the time. They're so popular and they don't look anything like this thing does on the road. See, now this is how you do a special edition interior for a car that's meant to be more of a track car. You throw in track bucket seats that may or may not fit everyone and may or may not be comfortable because they look awesome and they're a great tool for a purpose, keeping you in place on track. And it adds so much special feeling inside a saloon car where you just don't expect them. Same with the rear, chuck in a load of deep bucket seats in the rear and remove the middle seat. It may or may not be practical but what it definitely is, is flipping awesome. I love the ambiance inside the M5 CS. It feels so special. The track bucket seats, which are full carbon seats that very rarely are actually properly adjustable. They save weight. Again, I think it's part of that 70 kg figure because they saved a significant amount of weight in the M4 um, and they look amazing. Yes, you have the carbon willy holder, which we will forgive. It always feels like your phone is in between your legs or something. Um, but you've got the Nürburgring within the embossing here, which if you know, you know, and it's not obvious to everyone. Um, you've got the M5 logo. You've got the Mugello red leather on the side, which really stands out both on the front and the rear. Grab handles as well within the seats. They just look so special. Even on the rear ones, yes, you can fit a car seat, baby seat in there as I have. Um, my family's been all right with it actually, because I think it's partly because dad keeps buying two door four seat cars. So the fact that they get doors in the back is like a bonus. So they don't miss the middle seat. They're totally happy. Four person family, totally happy with this car. Five person, you'll be annoyed because that middle seat would have been useful. But the track bucket seats look awesome. They're actually very deep, just as deep as the ones in the front. And they're quite difficult to get into those 
as it is quite difficult to get in and out of these thanks to this here as well but you know i forgive it all because of how brilliant they look on the rear in fact you've got cs logo in the middle as well like we found on the front here which is perforated just like our steering wheel here so it's nice that you get the m5 cs within the digital screen there as well with its gold accents see the steering wheel quite lovely check out the cs stitching on the top there just like in my m2 it's a bit larger you can see the gloss red underneath there as well and that kind of matches nicely with the paddle shifters which are again from the m4 competition with the red details there and then the m1 and m2 buttons as well it's lovely to have a proper alcantara trim on this as well first time ever that i've liked this steering wheel in the modern bmws you'll notice the new like shadow chrome type trim here on the steering wheel and that continues on like the door card underneath the carbon fiber here on your center console as well you'll know it's there there's the cs logo with the carbon fiber trim finished in red which looks nice again matching like the m2 some weird things in the cs this is actually you can't open it for no reason i mean there'd be no harm in having a luggage compartment in there but it is what it is there's also only a reversing camera and for example your boot has no closing function so there's no motor in there. Saves more weight, doesn't it? So you have to close it manually. I just love it. It feels special. That's really what you want a limited edition interior to feel like. Of course, your drive unit here is like with the new competition, it's reduced. So now you have an M mode button that changes the screens in front of you to give you more M specific driving screens along with the head up, head up display. You've got track mode that makes it even more reduced by turning this display off. Then you've got the setup menu where you can decide what you want M1 and M2 to be or just change the current settings of the car. M1, we currently have everything in Sport and in M2, everything goes up to Sport Plus. Should we listen to the exhaust? Of course you want to listen to the exhaust. It's a nice, powerful exhaust now. We'll put it into M2, which is Sport Plus. You hear an audible change, as you should, as the engine settles now. It's a rev limiter at about four and a half thousand revs. It's a nice, powerful V8, but really the valves and the exhaust note don't really open up until you're going at speed, as you'll see in a minute. Um, and then it's quite an enjoyable engine to rev high. Now let's test that launch control and let me justify why I think this is probably the most capable super saloon that I've ever driven. Right guys, for a car like this with a claim zero to 60 of only three seconds, it's only right that we actually test that. So let's do it right now. To do that, you just turn off all the traction control, car needs to be in manual, Sport Plus, etc. Then you put your foot on the brake. Let's see what the M5 CS is going to be like. Oh, 2.9 seconds. Guys, this is a sub three second car. What? No, 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 no. There's just no way. Sub three seconds. Sub three seconds, that's insane. But that's what it says there, 2.92. Jeez, sub three seconds, that is bloody impressive. I can seldom believe it in uh, such a large saloon. That is truly incredible. Um, if any of you guys want Racebox Pro, by the way, that we've been using on the channel recently, use the code RACE10, get 10% off. Really good system. Right guys, so this should really give you an idea of how much tinkering has gone on with the M5 CS because let's face it, a 10 horsepower bump isn't really going to achieve massive gains in 0 to 60 versus the competition. It's negligible, isn't it? It's everything else that's been done in terms of the weight saving, the changes to the suspension and the rigidity, retuning of the dampers, the Pirelli tyres, all of these things coming together, small little changes to make a big difference. 
Now, let's talk about this car because the speed is ridiculous. I've never driven a saloon of this size that feels this nimble. I mean, the CS literally feels M3 size. Forget the way it handles for a second, just the speed of it. You know, you get a certain feeling of the weight of the car when you're putting down power. This feels like a very light car. In Sport Plus, the soundtrack is quite nice as you build the revs. This is the only super saloon I've driven that has got that relentless speed that an EV has, something like the Taycan or the Audi e-tron RS or the Tesla Model S. No combustion super saloon has got the speed that this thing does. And it's not just the power of, we've driven things on the channel, how I've owned something with 635 brake horsepower, namely the AMG GT 63S, which was a bespoke car made by AMG. Like, now that car has the same power, but the weight is the defining difference here. That's upwards of 2000 kg, whereas the M5 CS is just 1800 kg, 200 kg of difference. 200 kg of difference between a car that's meant to be more of a sports saloon than this one, and this is the lighter, nimbler car. Of course, that means your power to weight ratio is that much better in this. That's why you're getting the performance gains. Again, I'm surprised why M didn't do a lap time in this thing. And then these differences, thanks to the weight, thanks to how better placed the car is immediately to be faster. And you start to see the huge gains that the CS has both over its rivals and the M5 competition. This stupid part this car, oh my God. Yes, it is definitely the most powerful BMW M car in the world. And it tells you that as soon as you start to plant the power down, it's relentless in its speed. But what's shocking about this car, it is shocking, is how it's able to change direction at the speed that it's going. It literally seems to defy the laws of physics. I shouldn't be able to make turns like this at the speed I'm going. And the car is totally unbothered by it. There's no loss of tire contact. There's hardly any body roll. It's planted like nothing I've driven. I can't find the limit of this car. I can't find the point where it says, no, I'm too big for this corner. You need to slow down. The handling ability is scary. It's literally, I can't find the limits of it. I'm serious, guys. I'd love to see on track. That's maybe where you could find something, but I doubt it. It's just, you don't need to slow down. And the less you need to slow down, the quicker a car can be. I've never driven a super saloon like this. It's relentless. Anything that looks like a corner demolishes it with all the speed you're bringing into it. You're bringing all that speed into the corner, then the carbon ceramics kick in. You put your power down, grip, 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 grip. Traction is off here. Relentless speed into a corner, huge braking power, relentless grip out of it, and power and speed that, that we saw on the launch control and let's talk about the steering. We've got sports steering on at the moment. Really great feedback. Lovely steering. It's uh, nice feedback coming through here. This top track version of the M5, un unsurprisingly, has the best steering of the lot. It's something that they've really improved since the original M5 of this generation. And in this car, it's really faultless. The best part of this car is that it is the handling ability. The supernatural defying physics handling ability of this thing little things like the sound we're in sport plus which has apparently got the best soundtrack the revs are nice you pop your window down you get more of the actual v8 sound rather than the pumped in through the speakers and it's actually quite nice but for me like in my m2cs i'd be tempted to put an akrapovich system on this or something of that ill can really bring out the original sound of the car the engine of this car has been faultless. Not a single moment of turbo lag at all, be it in slow driving or faster driving. Really the perfect companion to an amazing chassis, an amazing suspension system. What was the M car always? It was a car that was built because of racing, because of homogulation. It was built by a company called BMW Motorsport. And that ability to take a large car like the 5 Series, or better yet, an amazing car like the M5 Competition, and better it further, bring it even closer to motorsport. That's what BMW M is all about. 
this car really is a love letter to M fans. It's a love letter to the M5, and yes, it's expensive, but look how special it is, both inside and out. Look how much lighter it is than its rivals. Look how much faster it is than everything. E63, RS6, Panamera, everything has to play catch up with this very special edition. The only places where I could criticize this car would be practicality and price, but then this is a limited edition track car, so practicality and price go against the nature of the very thing that it is. It's an absolutely marvelous super saloon. I love it to pieces. I think it's my favorite. I think if I wanted emotion and a more stonky V8 engine, I might go for the E63S or the Panamera Turbo S, but for pure ability, nothing can touch this. It is bloody brilliant. Well done, BMW M. Guys, I really hope you enjoy this episode. I've absolutely loved this car. If you've enjoyed it, please do like, subscribe, share this video, help RBR get to a million subscribers. I think I fancy going and trying that launch control again. See you next time.